Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. By comment and friend request, today is an episode about arm swing. So running mechanics, biomechanics, specifically with arm swing, how does it affect us while we run? Can changing it make us faster? If you have bad arm swing, does it make us slower? And then how can we work on it? So today in this video, I'm gonna address this topic in five quick key points that will hopefully make you guys better and faster runners. All right, so first thing, what is the function of our arms while we run? So real simply, your arms help control the rotation of your torso and improve balance. So when you run, you take a step, your body wants to naturally do this. Your arms help counterbalance that rotation of the torso. And there's actually a neural connection between your arms and your legs while you move. A great example is when you're running uphill, you tend to drive your arms a little more to try to improve leg turnover. And then when you go downhill, you might notice you tend to kind of break your arms a little bit like this because you're also breaking with your feet as you're going downhill. I'm not saying that's necessarily proper movement patterns. I'm just saying that that's kind of what we naturally tend to do. So your arms and your legs are neurologically linked. They go with one another. Hip to be square. A song so catchy. And I'll link that research below. Another example is if you think about your leg turnover, so like the golden number of 180 steps per minute, you can count your foot strikes. You can also count your arm swings. They tend to go hand in hand. Hmm, pretty cool. All right, so what if you restrict arm swing motion? How does it affect you? I found a really funny study where uh, they restricted arm motion while people walked and it increased the VO2 consumption, it increased heart rate and oxygen cost anywhere from 8% up to 34%. And they also found that as cadence increased, if their, if their arms were controlled, their stride length decreased. So like basically as they got faster, their stride length decreased because their arms couldn't help counterbalance the motion of the torso. And so to be clear, this was just during walking. Obviously walking and running are metabolically and biomechanically not the same. I actually couldn't find any studies on restricted arm motion during running, probably because it's kind of dangerous to do in a research context. If anyone finds anything, let me know. But the fact remains that restricting your arm motion can negatively impact your biomechanics. Okay, so the fix or the key point here, thankfully, your body will naturally find its arm swing rhythm. As you move, your body will start, will naturally find this matching rhythm and pace to kind of coincide or go in concert with your legs. You shouldn't have to focus on it too much unless there is a prevalent problem. But I'm fully aware that this can be a big problem for beginner runners or even experienced runners who are just trying to kind of work on their biomechanics. So I'm gonna discuss five common issues that often come up and ways we can address them. Issue number one, which is generally the most prevalent, is really sore neck and shoulder muscles uh, from running. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, I, I go for a run, like an easy 20 minute run, and my shoulders get really tight, my neck gets really sore. This is because when you're running, you're tensing up your shoulders. You're using your trapezius here to pull up your shoulders while you run. For whatever reason, um, everyone's got tension in their lives, right? Some people let it uh, let it go through their shoulders. So a great fix for this or something key you can focus on before you run and then in the middle of your runs. First thing, bend at the waist and relax your arms. Totally arms, like your arms are totally dead weight. Just let them flat. Nice, relaxed, easy, stress-free. <sighs> Take a deep breath, relaxed arms, relaxed arms, relaxed arms. Ah and then bend at the elbows. And this, you should try to keep this relaxed arm position, relaxed shoulder position while you are running. Now, I know this can be kind of hard to do at first. So this is one of those things that you may have to kind of actively work on and then eventually it will become a passive neuromuscular thing. Start to do it before you go running. And then if you notice in the middle of your run, like pay attention, if you notice in the middle of your run that you're starting to get tight or you notice your shoulders kind of creeping up, stop for a second, shake your arms out, go back to that nice relaxed arm position and then start to go again. With biomechanics, it's it takes time. You have to kind of pay attention to it, but you don't want to go crazy by focusing on it too much because running for an hour just constantly thinking about, are my shoulders tight? Oh God, it's, <laughs> it's miserable. So just something you kind of think about every few minutes, just kind of check in. Are my, are my shoulders tight? Are my, are my traps, am I, sh am I shrugging right now? Just kind, of, just kind of check in, be aware, just like any other mechanical thing that you kind of check in on, whether it's turnover or whatever it might be. Just check in periodically. Cool thing about this, if you watched my video about hip drop and biomechanics, ding, 
just by paying attention or being aware, you can actually drastically change your biomechanics. So there you go. The second most thing I commonly come across, clenched fists and arms while you run. Again, man, people get really tense. I do it sometimes too, and you just, mm, you just want mm, and go out there for a run and, um, so you don't want to do this because it'll actually kind of steal blood. These muscles will steal blood away from your, your working muscles like your legs. That's the actual biological term, by the way. It's called blood steal. This one's relatively straightforward. I remember when I was in high school, I was about to start a race one time. I was like on the starting line for an 800 or a mile. And the gun guy, the gun starter guy, he was like some South Texas guy. And he was like, you know where you go running, just make sure that you're... Yeah, think about think about carrying crackers in between your fingers. That'll be the best. So who are like crackers in the fingers? Going for a run, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm 16. All right, so the idea is that um, there's a few things you can think about. Think about maybe having crackers in between these fingers and you don't want to break the crackers. So you're kind of running along very gingerly, right? Not breaking the crackers. Some people swear by putting their thumbs and this finger together because it's like the least amount of tension or something with the hand muscles. That's something you could think about. I would say you don't have to think about crackers unless you really want to. Focus on just relaxing your hands. Don't squeeze. Pay attention to it. Really kind of notice if you, when you're running, if you're clenching your fists, it will affect your performance. If you clench your fists into your forearms and your arms, you use your arms while you run, but you don't really use the muscles of your forearms and your hand while you run, you know? So let that blood go to your legs. That's also why sometimes people wear sunglasses is because if you grimace, your cheeks, your face muscles will start to steal blood from your leg muscles. I know it sounds crazy, but every little bit, every little percent helps. Number three, if there's too much wasted motion in the arms, what's wasted motion with the arms? It's gonna be this, lateral movement. Yes, our arms control the movement of our torso, but generally we run forwards, not to the side. The kind of prevalent coaching theory is that you draw a line down the middle of your body and you don't let your arms cross in front of it. As you're running, like perfect form would be something like you're holding your little crackers and you're going to front to back, front to back like this. You can think of bringing your hands to your chest pocket like that, like this. With this, you're pretty much always keeping your motion going forward. You're not wasting any crazy movement like this. Is that a raincoat? <laughs> yes, it is. So while you're running, just to think of going forwards, just think of kind of keeping your hands going back and forth like this, your hands and your arms going back and forth like this. If you notice yourself doing this, just try to boop, 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 just try to bring them out a little bit. Again, just kind of be aware, just notice it. So that leads me to point number four, which is if your arms are bent enough. Now this can be pretty dramatic. Curiously enough, I've seen people who run with super straight arms. I know they do this in like the anime cartoons and stuff. He's been compared to Elvis Costello. I would highly recommend not doing that. The reason is, is that this is a longer moment arm for your body to swing. It's actually really hard to, to swing these back and forth just because the leverage is so long. So you really, 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 really want to focus on having your arms bent. You don't need to squeeze them forwards, but it's something that you should actively try and pay attention to. So as you're squeezing your crackers and you're keeping it kind of on this line here, you want to think about keeping your arms bent and bringing your hands to your pockets as small an angle in here as you can, comfortably. So when you're going back like this, don't let your arms swing back like that. That's not really gonna help you in distance running. In sprint performance, different. But in distance running, you don't really want that. You wanna try and keep your arms nice and bent like this, all throughout the whole motion. Hey, Paul! How many, how many American Psycho references is that so far? <laughs> Do you like Huey Lewis in the point number five? Your actual cadence of your arms is too slow. It is not corresponding to your legs. That can result for sure from having your arms being extended too much because you can't swing your arms like this at 180 steps or swings per minute. The physics on it's just too hard. So that's why you bend your arms so you can have nice quick I said earlier that we tend to naturally kind of find the right arm swing for us while we run. This is true, except in this case where people carry their cell phones next to them while they run. Ah, 
Huh. Do you ever do that? I've done it before. We've all done it. We've all been there. If you're running with your phone, you have headphones. I promise you, your arms are not in swing and step and cadence with your legs. Uh, running with a phone in your hand will affect your mechanics. I will look for research on this and I will try and throw it below, I promise. You're naturally not gonna wanna carry your phone like this, nor are your arms gonna wanna be at this natural cadence. It's gonna be modified. Your arm swing's probably gonna be a little slower than normal. The angle here is gonna be a little lower and you're also gonna be losing oh, like a percentage of performance because your, your hand's squeezing your phone to try and hold onto it, right? If this is you, if you find yourself running with a phone, I mean, sometimes we have to, like these things happen, whatever. But I wouldn't do it every day. That'll, it's just not natural. When you run a race, you're probably not gonna have your phone in your hands, right? So try and invest in some wireless headphones or I'll link you guys the headphones I wear. I use like a little iPod shuffle. So my iPod shuffle and I put it on this little thing like it goes in the back like right here. Bing. Which is really cool. And this just kind of wraps around your head. You're on your ears. Just like this. Here's back. Yeah, and then, and then as you're running, you just hit play. Next. Sorry. Super lightweight, super easy to control. These are also super cheap. They're like 30 bucks. I'll link them below. The company is Arriva. I'm not sponsored by them <laughs> yet, but I've been running in these things for about three years now. Full transparency, sometimes they break because they're bendy and stuff, but they're not extravagantly expensive. Like I said, like 30 bucks. Could have wireless Bluetooth headphones that connect down to your phone, but try and get in the habit of not carrying stuff in your hands. It'll be extra weight, extra blood steel, and it really will affect your movement patterns. Okay, and that is our episode on arm swing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for requesting this in the comments. I'm happy to talk about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And then uh, leave a comment, tell me what you think. If there's stuff you guys want me to cover in the future, let me know. I love doing this stuff. I have tons of ideas for videos I wanna do, but if I can directly help uh, my viewers, that's the best thing I can do. So I just wanna provide some good value to you guys, to you runners, help everyone run faster, more efficiently, and uh, yeah, hopefully provide some some quality, educational answers uh, with no BS around it. Just wanna be transparent. So that's why I linked the research below, and that's why I try, I try and give really practical advice. Also, I'll leave a link below. If you want to help support the channel directly, monetarily, I'll leave a link to my Patreon. I would appreciate any kind of financial support that would be Super cool, don't feel obligated. I really just wanna provide good, free educational content for you guys. But if you feel so inclined or you have the ability, any donations or help will be fantastically appreciated. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next episode. Bye.